the crack of my neck too. All right. Go ahead. I tried. I couldn't. Ah! Everything's flopping around over here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today we are doing lesson 99. Salvation is my only function here. Let us begin. Alex? Lesson 99. Salvation is my only function here. Salvation and forgiveness are the same. They both imply that something has gone wrong, something to be saved from, forgiven for, something amiss that needs corrective change, something apart or different from the will of God. Thus do both terms imply a thing impossible, yet which has occurred, resulting in a state of conflict seen between what is and what could never be. Truth and illusions both are equal now, for both have happened. The impossible becomes the thing you need forgiveness for, salvation from. Salvation now becomes the borderland between the truth and the illusion. It reflects the truth because it is the means by which you can escape illusions. Yet it is not yet the truth because it undoes what was never done. Yes. So what it's speaking about there, folks, is that the very meanings of the words salvation and forgiveness, being that they're exactly the same thing, they imply that something has gone wrong. And in everything we have been taught that something's gone wrong, that we are bad, we are wrong, something's evil, good, right, wrong, all these things. And one of the things they are trying to get you to understand is that nothing has ever gone wrong, ever. You have never done anything wrong or bad, neither has your brother, no matter how violent their crime may seem to be. it still is not considered wrong. I know that sounds crazy, folks. What it is, is that in those moments, it is the judgments that you hold of it. That is what needs to be let go of, is those judgments you hold forth as being true. Those are the things that are you are holding forth is defining you, defining your brothers, and defining this world around you and everything you experience within it. Everything you've been taught to think and believe to be true is what you judge everything by. You project out those beliefs before you and see, perceive what it is you believe. In this state that they're talking about, they bring everything together to where it interweaves, where there's this very fine line that still seems to be in place. And what they are speaking of is how when these things are brought together, you begin to recognize certain patterns at play, certain sequences that seem to happen again and again, they repeat themselves. And in your mind, you are finding truths, but the illusions are now not quite as strong, but they're still in place. So you're seeing them at an equal basis now. It's like you're still following those ego beliefs and judgments of everything. And yet you're seeing the truth of things too. And you're not sure how to break the two apart. And that's what this is getting to. How it is to recognize that you can see through it. Recognize where they sever. And it's that belief in forgiveness that 
you need to forgive something. That is part of what it's talking about. It's letting go that belief that anything has gone wrong. Which means there's never anything to actually forgive. Because if everything that happens is for your benefit, how could anything ever go wrong? Please continue. How could there be a meeting place at all where earth and heaven can be reconciled within a mind where both of them exist? The mind that sees illusions thinks them real. They have existence in that they are thoughts, and yet they are not real, because the mind that thinks these thoughts is separate from God. What joins the separated mind and thoughts with mind and thought, which are forever one? What plan could hold the truth inviolate, yet recognize the need illusions bring, and offer means by which they are undone, without attack and with no touch of pain? What but a thought of God could be this plan? by which the never done is overlooked and sins forgotten, which were never real. And that, folks, what it speaks of there in those two paragraphs, one about where that fine line where these two meet and recognizing how to reconcile them together. And, you know, as I keep sharing and sounding like a broken record, as Alex pointed out earlier today, I sound like a broken record. Um, with everything being our choice, to choose to believe as we do, think as we do, accept the judgments and opinions that we do, experience everything as we choose. The meeting place they speak of here is recognizing that you are the one that is choosing and recognizing the truth that is set before you and accepting that and letting go of what you've been taught. The illusion, the lies. And even though when you started all of this, you had this strength of belief that the illusions you've been taught were real. And now, this far into this, it's starting to dawn on you that some of these things you've been taught aren't true. And the more you start looking at these things you've been taught, the more you'll realize that more and more of it is not true. Until you recognize that everything you've been taught is not true. And that pain and suffering that you've been dealing with comes from those beliefs of those things that are not true. And as it says here in paragraph four, the only thing I have found to heal that pain and suffering is when I chose to follow God's plan and hand everything over to him and ask him for the truth of what it was I was doing. What were the choices I made to think and believe? And what's the correction to them? And it's asking those questions and accepting the answers I'm being given that healed me to where I no longer suffer and am in pain any longer. Please continue. The Holy Spirit holds this plan of God exactly as it was received of him within the mind of God and your own. It is apart from time in that its source is timeless. Yet it operates in time because of your belief that time is real. Unshaken does the Holy Spirit look on what you see on sin and pain and death on grief and separation and on loss. Yet does he know one thing must still be true, 
God is still love, and this is not his will. This is the thought that brings allusions to truth and sees them as appearances behind which is the changeless and the sure. This is the thought that saves and that forgives because it lays no faith in what is not created by the only source it knows. This is the thought whose function is to save by giving you its function as your own. Salvation is your function with the one to whom the plan was given. Now are you entrusted with this plan along with him. He has one answer to appearances regardless of their form, their size, their depth, or any attribute they seem to have. <clears throat> Salvation is my only function here. God is still love, and this is not his will. Absolutely. So what these are speaking of, folks, is that when you choose to hand everything over to Holy Spirit and ask him for the correction, he will give you the answer. And... All he can do is lay it before you. It is up to you to choose to take it and accept it and to let go of what you were taught, what you were believing before. And it is this ability that Holy Spirit has that he can fold space and time as he has with me to show me truly the things that I experienced as that nine-month-old child with my grandmother force-feeding me and kicking me across the room, the things she was saying as she was doing it. And her emotional energy and the thoughts going through my own mind that I must have done something wrong. I must be bad. I must deserve this treatment at nine months old. When he folded space and time and allowed me to stand there as an observer, a third party, I could then watch what was happening. I could hear my thoughts as that child in that moment. I could feel my emotions as that child in that moment. And then I could hear my grandmother's thoughts. As she spoke her words out loud, I could hear them and I could feel her turmoil of emotion. Now keep in mind, folks, I'm a psychic empath. I experience other people's emotions. So even as that nine-year-old, nine-month-old child, excuse me, I could feel what she was feeling and understood that she was angry with me. Believing I was the object of her pain and misery. And in truth, she was angry at herself for not being able to control my father. And these are things that I had to understand where I got certain triggers from certain beliefs. And it wasn't until I asked where the, they came from that I was shown. I had to ask where the hell did these things come from before I was shown. He folded space and time to show me it. And that was when my eyes opened to the truth of the things that I was doing. Holy Spirit has the ability to do anything and everything. He is not limited. The only thing he cannot do is take away your free will. He can give you the answer, but it's up to you to accept it. And it's only when we start to look at our thoughts 
to see what it is that we've been thinking in any given moment that we see the truth of what it is we have been believing to be true. What it is we've put our faith, trust, and belief into. What it is we are judging. All of these things are being handed to us in every single moment if we only choose to look at the thoughts going through our own heads. We're constantly taught to seek out there in the world and ask everybody else out there, what am I doing wrong? What is it I need to do here? What do you think I should be doing? And never once are you taught to go within and look, to look at what it is you're thinking, feeling emotionally, and experiencing physically when these thoughts and emotions come up within you. And to look at what they are and where they came from. To ask yourself, why am I believing it and where the hell did it come from? And then to hand it over to Holy Spirit and ask those questions of Him. It's only when we ask we get the answers. And the thought they are telling you guys to consider using. Salvation is my only function here. God still is love. And this is not his will. Anything that causes pain and suffering is not God's will. To cast a judgment in any way is not his will. His will is allowing and accepting whatever it is we choose for ourselves to experience in any given moment. That is his will for us, which is he wills for us what we will for ourselves. Please continue. You who will yet work miracles, be sure you practice well the idea for today. Try to perceive the strength in what you say, for these are words in which your freedom lies. Your father loves you. All the world of pain is not his will. Forgive yourself the thought he wanted this for you. Then let the thought with which he has replaced all your mistakes enter the darkened places of your mind that thought the thoughts that were never his will. So I need to say something. This harkens back to what I was just speaking of. And there's something that's being brought to my attention. I have spoken before about how they, my guides and Holy Spirit have talked to me about going within the labyrinth of my mind to recognize that each step I take inward into the labyrinth of my own mind is a step toward the center of that labyrinth, that maze. And once I reach center, I reach home. I come back to who I truly am. Do you get that? Once you reach that center, you come back to who you truly are within. And the understandings and the visuals I was given when I was giving those words about walking the labyrinth of my mind, that each step I was to take, I was to take it with Holy Spirit and to ask him to shine his light before me and show me the way and the truth of what it is that I am doing so I can get back to who I am. And as I took each step, it was another experience being looked at, another nook, another cranny being, a light being flashed into and anything in there being dragged out. I started looking at all the experiences, seeking them out within my own mind that I've ever had and had traumas from and looking at them. Every single part, 
the rapes, the molestations, the beatings, all of them in minute detail to understand what it was I was thinking and believing and experiencing in those moments, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And then to allow myself to hear what was happening with those that were doing those things to me. Just like that first time, Holy Spirit, fold it time and space. Each time I ask, he does it for me. Ask and you will receive. But you have to ask. Please continue. This part belongs to God, as does the rest. It does not think its solitary thought and make them real by hiding them from him. Let in the light, and you will look upon no obstacle to what he wills for you. Open your secrets to his kindly light, and see how bright this light still shines in you. Practice his thought today, and let his light seek out and lighten up, lighten up all darkened spots and shine through them to join them to the rest. It is God's will your mind be one with his. It is God's will that he has but one son. It is God's will that his one son is you. Think of these things in practicing today, and start the lesson that we learn today with this instruction on, in the way to truth. Of truth. Salvation is my only function here. Salvation and forgiveness are the same. Then turn to him who shares your function here and let him teach you what you need to learn to lay all fear aside and know yourself as love which has no opposite in you. Yes. So what those are speaking of, folks, is just like I was just speaking just momentarily ago about handing it all over to them and asking them. Ask them to shine their light of truth before you, to be willing to walk into those dark spaces in your life, those traumas, those trials, those tribulations, to be willing to look at them freely now and see the truth of what you were choosing to believe, to see the judgments you are laying over your brothers and the judgments that were laid over you and the judgments that you chose to accept as being the truth about your brother and yourself. Be willing to look at these things and hand them over. It's recognizing that nothing has gone wrong here. That you chose to judge just as you chose to accept the judgments. And in everything, folks, it's a pattern repeated. Just as we shared yesterday, I will say it again. You have been repeating patterns taught to you. It's a pattern learned. Everything that you do in your life is a pattern learned. And just like your parents before you and your grandparents before them and so forth throughout history, generationally, it's a pattern repeated. Taught to the next generation and never questioned. Until now. Please continue. Forgive all thoughts which would oppose the truth of your completion, unity, and peace. You cannot lose the gifts your father gave. You do not want to be another self. You have no function that is not of God. Forgive yourself the one you think you made. Forgiveness and salvation are the same. Forgive what you have made, and you are saved. 
There is a special message today which has the power to remove all forms of doubt and fear forever from your mind. If you are tempted to believe them true, remember that appearances cannot withstand the truth these mighty words contain. Salvation is my only function here. God is still love, and this is not his will. Your only function tells you you are one. Remind yourself of this between the times you give five minutes to be shared with him who shares God's plan with you. Remind yourself, salvation is my only function here. Thus do you lay forgiveness on your mind and let all fear be gently laid aside that love may find its rightful place in you and show you that you are the Son of God. So, this whole thing with salvation, folks, as my guides have explained it to me, salvation is accepting responsibility for the choices you have chosen to make. For every choice you have made to think, believe, say, and do, as you so choose. That no one else is responsible for these things but you. You know, all of us are taught to try and hand away our responsibility to somebody else. To want someone to come up and hold our hand and tell us what to do when to do it and how to do it and not be told why it is we have to do it that way. Just tell us what to do and we'll do it. We don't want to think about any of it. Just do what we're told and be done with it. Let somebody else be responsible. It doesn't work that way. In everything, you have to accept responsibility for whatever it is you are choosing to think, believe, say, and do, whatever it is you are choosing to feel emotionally, feel and experience physically, that is your choice. Even when it comes down to the diseases that your body incurs, even that is a choice, folks. I found that out firsthand too. All right, this was lesson 99, Salvation is My Only Function Here. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sabrina Rianga. And I am the Holy Son of God, a.k.a. Alex Rianga. <laughs> yes, he is. He is the Holy Son of God, a.k.a. Alex Rianga. <laughs> And I'm in love with I was him. just going to say Holy Son of God, but I don't want to sound too conceited. You know, I'm playing this character, this role. Yeah, you're just an actor on the stage right now. Right. As we all seem to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're all actors on a stage. But some of us get to rise above it and watch the actors on the stage without being part of it. We're here, we're in it, but not of it. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. Hugs, love, light, and blessings on your journeys. Please be the light you are meant to be. Be the light we know you to be. Please choose to be the light. We hope you all enjoy these lessons with us. And we hope that you find usefulness and value in the things that we share. I try to pack as much information as possible into these. As much of the understanding as I've been given into these. But I'll tell you folks... Nine times out of ten, it's not even touching on even at the tip of it. Honestly, there is so much I could share with you all. I just have no idea or understanding of how to go about doing so. 
one a day for 365 days. That's one way. That's, you know, an hour per video. That's, you know, a lot of information you can share over a year. I know. Sometimes I think I do an overload sequence or something on these folks. Maybe broken record sequence. Yeah, but, you know, it keeps telling us things have to be repeated again and again and again before we get it. It's that repetition. All right, folks, have a beautiful, wonderful day. Hugs, love, light, and blessings. We love you.